Hi, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about October 7th and basically the group stage of the League of Legends Worlds Tournament. I have my League of Legends merchandise um, on me to get it going, and I'm excited to talk about my predictions for the group, basically, and the dark horses, some underdogs that I will probably take some chances on, but at the same time, um, go over the first day of the slate. Um, for DFS purposes, Daily Fantasy Sports, um, they have put together a six-game slate, basically all the games that are happening today, and I'm sure that they'll do the same for tomorrow and, and so on. So we're excited about that. I, I think it's a bigger prize pool it's the most exciting time of the year um as a matter of fact i will be physically going to atlanta um for the semifinals uh on october 29th and 30th i believe yeah so you know if you guys are going to new york or to atlanta or to uh you know california for the group stage semifinals finals let me know Happy to meet up um, at, at, in Atlanta and also kind of, you know, share some pictures and videos and your excitement and your experience um, from from those times. So without any further ado, let's go into the group stage. So let's for that right there. Okay, where is this? Okay. All right. So. Um, this is a pick 'em game that the the official League of Legends um website, right? Riot Games, the developer of the game, um, has put out. Um, for some reason, I think, or for you know, for good reasons. Um, if you get some of these right on this website, you get some prizes. So anyway, it's kind of cool. So I have my notes here. Um, just after going through all the data. This is the summary that I have. So for Group A, um, I really like T1 and e EDG to come out of here, but this group right here, Group A, was the toughest one for me to predict, only because basically all all these teams are pretty good. Um, I think T1 and EDG are like a little a half a tier above than C9 and Fnatic, but C9 and Fnatic are probably the two best um so to call so to speak underdog teams and their respective group um i think t1 and edg will most likely finish first and second and i just wanted to point out um and the reasoning behind that is first of all t1 has a very strong top and jungler top laner and jungler and the current meta, as I mentioned here, as a key factor, at least just from watching the play-in stage as well, um, and the and the um, meta change that has happened, um, the meta that they're going to play on is going to be very top and jungle heavy. Um, I've heard some rumors that the mid laners even are going to play some utility or support champions to kind of get the top laner and the jungler going. So that, you know, would translate into... Um, the top laners and the junglers score better than previously. So, you know, that's kind of one key nugget that I will probably um, focus on a little more um, this world's tournament, uh, maybe having a jungler in the captain spot for fantasy sports or, you know, betting on over kills or over assists um, total, um, total number of assists or kills for junglers and top laners on any betting websites as well. But T1 has a really good top laner called Zeus, um, an owner in the jungle. Um, that duo is prob probably the best top jungle duo in that group. Um, so that's one key factor why I chose them. And T1 has been pretty solid overall, like other than the bottom duo where Gumayushi and Karia um, have been probably at mediocre level compared to what they were last year or last spring split at least. Um, but still, I think that's enough to beat out EDG's team where EDG's Flandre in the top lane and JJ or, you know, Junja, like depending on who, which jungler shows up for EDG, I prefer Junja 
as if you've watched my previous uh, pre previous videos, but still, I think I prefer owner and Zeus duo um, for T1 versus the counterparts at EDG. So, um, but EDG's <laughs> roster is very talented. Obviously, Viper and Mako in the bottom lane are really, really good. Um, I think they're the best bottom duo in this group. Um, so they can win you some games and they're not going to be a liability. Whereas I think um, some of the other teams and other groups will be. Um, but I think, I mean, like I said, this group A is very tough to call because like even C9 and Fnatic have really good bottom duo. I mean, Fnatic upset and Hilly saying you saw them in the playing stage. They look really, really good. Cloud9 has Berserker, you know, in the bottom lane, who's been really solid in the LCS this year. Um, but at the same time, I just don't think Cloud9 and Fnatic's top laners and the junglers can compete against the ones for, for T1 and EDG. So that's the primary reason why I chose them. And I have T1 EDG in the finishing in the top two and advance to the quarterfinals. And then C9 and T uh, Fnatic. But I do think C9 and Fnatic are live underdogs. Um, I would take some chances on them to finish either first or second in this group, like I said. Um, the 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 level of difference between uh between these four teams, among these four teams, is not that great. Like really, C9, if they catch a break or Fnatic even. Um, like I said, Fnatic had a really good showing in the playing stage. So if they continue their momentum, um, I mean, either of these teams can definitely finish second or first. Um, so I, I definitely can see that happening. And I don't say that about every group. So like I said, this, this was the toughest group to call. Group B is JDG versus, uh, well, JDG, G2, Damwon Kia, and Evil Geniuses. I think JDG definitely finishes first here. Um, they were just so dominant in the toughest region, toughest league in the world in China. Um, they beat teams like Top Esports and EDG and, you know, all of them. So, you know, like RNG. So, yeah, I mean, I, I really like JDG. And like I said, and the meta change favors them as well with 369 and Kanavi, probably the two of the best top laners and junglers in the whole world right now. Um, so I'm going to have to say JDG first. And then I think there's a, like a little tier below where G2 and Damwon Kia um, are probably going to compete against for the second spot. Um, a lot of people are high on Damwon Kia, but I'm actually really not. Um, I was very disappointed in the in seeing the form of Nuguri and Birdall, who are the top laners for Damwon Kia. And they just do not you know assure me that they're gonna hold down that top lane very well like i think g2 with broken blade in the top lane is much preferred for me at least over damon kia obviously damon kia has canyon and jungle and showmaker at mid lane um but their bottom lane is a liability with um you know kellen um as a support like i think damon kia is not not that great, to be honest with you. Um, I very much prefer G2 with Flack. You know, I think their bottom lane is suspect as well for G2, but I I prefer Broken Blade over Nuguri. Uh, much more proactive and much more dominant in the laning phase. Um, and as long as Yankos plays okay um, versus, let's say, Canyon for Dalwin Kia, which it can be a question mark, but I, I've seen Yankos play decent, like, right? Like, so I think I'm going to go G2 over Damwon Kia, which is not a um, popular opinion. But, you know, I, like I think uh, most people or most experts have picked Damwon Kia. But I think really Damwon Kia this year is not the same Damwon Kia that we've seen before, especially the one where they won the whole world tournament <laughs> uh, last year or two years ago, I guess it was. Um Anywho, um, so I'm going to go with JDG, G2, and then Damwon Kia and Evil Geniuses. EG, last thing I'll talk about this group is EG. Um, they had a really good showing in the uh, game, you know, um, play-in stage. But that was against um, mediocre teams at best. So I think this is going to be, there's going to be a very big gap, talent gap between 
EG's players, especially without Danny, I think their ceiling is limited. Um, and and I look for ceilings like that and underdogs um, to potentially upset um, the top teams like JDG. But I just don't see EG having that, just especially after watch, watching the playing stage. I think they were decent in the um, like a best of five. I think their in-game adjustments were good. But in the group stage where it's not going to be a best of five, it's just going to be best of one, you know, every day. I don't think EG is going to have um, that opportunity to kind of flip the script, to be honest with you. So I'm going to have to go with JDG and then G2, Dawan Kia, and then Evil Geniuses. Group C is an interesting one, to say the least. I say Group D, which I'll talk about next, is very easy to pick. Group C, um, I definitely think top esports will go first. Um, I mean, top esports, as you guys know, has a very solid team, probably the best team fighting team in the world. In addition to JDG, I say JDG and top esports have shown me that they're the best team fighting teams in the whole wor world right now. Um, but also their laning phase is really good. Tian, the jungler, obviously has um, won the MVP this summer split. And he he was really good in terms of, you know, just operating around the map and, you know, uh, putting pressure in each of the lanes. So I definitely prefer him over any of the junglers <laughs> in this group. Um, I think top esports' biggest weakness is probably in the top lane, though. So obviously with the current meta change, that is a little bit of a question mark that I can see, but it's not like he, you know, loses the laning phase where like DRX you saw um, King in kind of was a liability, you know, I'll be honest with you. It was a liability even in their win against RNG. Um, in a lot of the games in the playing stage, the RX's top lane and top laner what you know made made it more much more difficult for that team to win um in that phase. Um so I think top esports may go through the same thing. I don't know. Um I just think the other lanes are so much better compared to the their opponents in the group C. Um, so I do think top esports will finish first. Um, I do think DRX's form looked really good in the playing stage. As long as they start Juhan or Piosik, I mean, I don't know who they're going to start at jungle, but um, this is a tough one because I think I can definitely see Rogue playing well and beating DRX as well. Um, but just based on DRX's four, I mean, they finished first in the playing stage over RNG. That's very impressive. Um, I'm going to have to go DRX. I think, I mean, Zika in the mid lane was a monster and I think he's going to be a difference maker over Rogue playing against Larson. So I have top esports, DRX, and then Rogue, and then GAM esports. I mean, from Vietnam, I mean, I think they, they're okay. Um, I think their jungler is really good. Um, but at the same time, everywhere else, I, I prefer top esports, DRX, and Rogue counterparts much, much better in, the, in those roles. So, um, yeah, that's probably how I'm going to put it. TES and DRX. Rogue is definitely an underdog that I keep my eyes out on. And then, uh, sorry to go back, but for Group B, yeah, that one Kia that can definitely pull it off. So, uh, I'm not a believer in Nagri or Birdall. So maybe like they're a big underdog that I should believe in, just <laughs> based on Showmaker and Canyon. But I just don't think they're that good this year. So I, th I know they made a huge run in the playoffs to make it to the Worlds, but I don't know. I don't think so. All right, Group C, that was that. And then Group D, like I said, it's pretty easy. I'll keep this one shorter. Um, Gen G and RNG should be the top two finishers in this uh, group. Um, based on a lot of the rumors and results that I've seen from the scrimmages amongst the teams uh, leading up to the group stage, apparently Gen G still is in really good form. And a lot of the opponents I've heard, like especially uh, – uh, Odo Omne for Rogue talk about how Gen how good Gen G has looked so far, and they were really good <laughs> before the world as well, like in the summer split and the whole year basically. I mean, they they are the team to beat. They have the highest best odds to win the whole whole world's tournament. Um, I do think Gen G should be able to 
beat RNG and the other two teams in this group and finish first. Um, as long as they, you know, play well, they just have so many win conditions where Peanut is it's one of the most creative junglers. Um, he's good. And then um, Ruler is one of, probably one of the best carries in form right now. Um, so I, I really like Genji to finish first. And then, and then, yeah, I mean, it has to go to RNG, right? Like, I think CTBC, Flying Oyster, and 100 Thieves are just much inferior compared to RNG. I think RNG has shown some mistakes in the early uh, play-in stage, um, but they've kind of, you know, put put together a good um, good showing after that first game against DRX. Um, they did make some mistakes. They did look some uh, you know, look flawed in some of the team fights and positioning around the uh, objectives, but at the same time, I think they are just better team fighting team <laughs> compared to you know anybody else um in this group other than Genji. So I really like RNG to finish second, and then if I were to pick a dark horse in Group D, I just don't have anybody. I mean, hundred thieves maybe, but. I just don't have anybody in this group. So I, I think it's Genji and RNG. And uh, in addition, and the last thing I'll talk about the group stage is the meta change. Like I said, it's more of a top and jungle focus I mentioned. So I'll, I'll focus on those players to see, you know, if the team has a top laner or jungling uh, jung jungler player that can carry that team. And I'll talk about that later when I talk about today's um games and predictions but um and then the next key factor for me is just focusing on the gdm factor gdm stat um goal difference between the teams um that has been factored in into my predictions like t1 and edg had much better um gdms compared to c9 and F, uh, fanatic versus like each other pay, uh, based on the historic data and then JDG, yeah, I mean, you saw, you probably have seen JDG stats from the summer split, but it's crazy good. So, um, and then top esports, DRX, not so much, but Rogue, not so much either. So, like, where do I go from those, between those two? I don't know. And then Genji obviously had astronomical <laughs> uh, stats and metrics that um, were just out of this world, really good. Um, and RNG, not so much, but. You know, they're just a better team than these two teams in, the, in this group. So, all right. So that is what I'm going to do here. I am going to make the final changes and submit this. And we'll see what happens after that throughout the tournament. Um, that one I got, JDG, G2, Damakia. And then D1 EDG Cloud9. I can definitely see EG beating Dawan Kia. Like, this is going to be an interesting matchup for those LCS watchers. Like, I know you guys are pulling for LCS teams, and I can definitely see. I think Dawan Kia is a weak team this year. So, so just for what it's worth, um, I just wanted to tell you that's I'm going to have it there. Um, This is how I submit it, but just locks. Okay, got it. So that is it. Um, let's look at today's games. I think that would be the easiest. And then kind of share my predictions there. Um, where is this? All right. So we have six games, like I said, today. And then six, should, should be six more games tomorrow. Yep. All right, six games today. All right, Cloud versus uh, Cloud Nine versus Fnatic. Um, I'm gonna make my picks, and then I'm gonna look at the odds. If the odds agree with me, that's great. If not, then you know I'll kind of maybe that's a good underdog play. I don't know, so we'll see. All right, uh, October seventh match predictions. C Nine versus Fnatic. This is a tough one. Like I said, C Nine and <laughs> Man, like first game and it's, I'm stumbling already. Uh, Fnatic has looked really good in the playing stage, and everybody's like talking up how good C9 has been this year as well. Um, in the LCS, especially in the, the latter half of the summer split. Um, this is a tough one. Um, I'm gonna look at the 
uh, roster. I, you think I was going to look at the odds, but nope, not yet. I don't like doing that yet. Um, main event. I wanted to see... I wanted. I just wanted to compare the rosters between C9 and Fnatic. Okay, Fudge in the top lane. He's pretty good. Blabber's been really good. Jensen's been all right. Berserker has been pretty good. And then Fnatic. Wonder has been mediocre. Resort. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not too impressed with this roster for Fnatic, but at the same time, they looked amazing in the playing stage, right? I just want to see one thing, how good uh, Wonder was in the playing stage. I think that's important to see, to be honest with you, just to see how he fares up against um, Fudge for C9. difference amongst the top laners in the playing stage. Where's Fnatic? Wonder. Minus 32. Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Hmm. That is no good. And kill share. One of the lowest. Wonder was not very good. Yeah, it's not looking that great, right? Like, let me see how uh, Resort did as well. Oh, pretty good. See, like, Resort pro was probably one of the key factors why Fnatic finished first. 68% kill participation. Yeah, Resort was pretty good. I want to see how um, Blabber and Fudge did. I'll keep this uh, within the next mi one minute. Um, I just wanted to see one thing real quick. Fudge was okay. Sixty, okay, not bad. Library was very good. Yeah. I mean just like I was before for Fanatic. <laughs> Last patch. Top. Fudge was not good. Wow. Library was good, just like it was before. Yeah, so I don't know. That's a very interesting dichotomy we have here. So Fudge was not that great. Wonder was not that great. So maybe that evens out. Blabber and Resort were both really good comparatively. Obviously, we don't have the common opponents to analyze on. Um, they're from different regions. They're they and Fnatic also played in the play-in stage. So maybe like having a game under their belt or a few games under their belt um, maybe gets them going. Let's play loose a little more. Humanoid has been really good, um, but not as good as Niski and the LEC. Jensen is a liability probably in my opinion, but Upset has re was really good in the playing stage, but can he go up against Berserker? Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, it's a toss up. I don't know. Like this is a very tough one to me for me to call. 
okay, I'm going to have to go. Maybe I just picked the underdog, like, just for ownership leverage. I don't know. That doesn't help me either. Um, Cloud9 is a favorite. Yeah. I can see it. People are high on Cloud9 this year. Um, maybe one more thing. I just wanted to see how dominant Fnatic was compared to everybody else. I don't think they were, just from what I saw earlier. I think early game was not very good. Mid game was very good. Goal difference, fourth. I want to see. Mid game was good. Good mid game for Fnatic. But overall goal defense is not that not that impressive. But Resort was really good. So Oh man. I'm gonna pick Cloud Nine because I'm a sucker, probably. Um but like I said, fanatic, live, underdog. Sorry, guys. I wish I was more uh, sure. But all right. I'll be more sure on this one, I think. Um, like I said, I am not a believer in that one, Kia. I think Broken Blade will be dominant in the top lane. The only question mark I have is in the jungling spot with Yankos versus Canyon because I know Caps can definitely go against uh, showmaker, I think Caps will do just fine, and I think the bottom lanes for both teams are a liability. I think that one Kia was a favorite, if I saw correctly, but I do think G2 is gonna win. Um, I'm gonna pick G2 as an upset, as an underdog, um, because like I said, I think the top laning difference there, and I think that one Kia is just not a good team this year, so all right, and then. Is it CTBC or a CFO? Sometimes they have seen both. Um, this is a tough one as well. I'm sure 100 Thieves is a favorite. Yeah. Um, is this the one with Levi as a jungle? Or that's Gam. All right, Gam. Okay. I want to see the roster. Okay. Uh, that's not a bad roster. Okay. Some days really good though. And closer is okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go hundred thieves. Um. But I do think CTBC is definitely um, a live underdog. CFO. Um, and then one thing I'll note about Damon Kia is that they don't play fast. Just to go back to the earlier game, so maybe Damon Kia is not. That's another negative factor to picking them as an underdog or as a favorite um, on a six-game slate. So, um, so there's that. Um, JDG over EG, yeah. Sorry. JDG. What, is our, what are the odds? 700. Um, JDG scores very well. Um, that makes EG also a good, good bump in terms of point upside. But I just feel like JDG should win this. 
pretty handedly. Um, but if you are playing like hundred lineups, yeah, I would definitely go a few lineups with EG because it the match itself has the upside because JDG plays really fast and they force team fights that naturally translates into EG potentially scoring well if they somehow uh, pulls off of a big upset. EG will probably be you know the least expensive pieces on the slate in my opinion so all right t1 versus edish yeah this is a tough one i'm gonna go t1 here today um i think zeus is ready in the top lane to play well um and i think this will be one of the slowest games in on today's slate but edish is definitely a lot dog all right, Gen G versus RNG, the marquee matchup of the day. Gen G is a favorite, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, RNG has shown some mistakes. I'm gonna go with Gen G as well. But RNG can definitely pull this off if they hit everything on their cylinders. Um, two eighty five. So yeah, you see, I mean, in four of the six matches, I have their, you know, a lot underdog um predictions there so like i said in the group stage really <clears throat> all these teams are good that's why they're here it's kind of like the fifa world cup um where any team can win on any given day with the strategy champs uh champs uh picks and bands and so but yeah that's all i got for you guys today i am picking g2 over Dawan kia as my underdog pick um but otherwise let me know if you enjoyed the video by hitting the like button below. Um, this video was sponsored by TrueDFS. So go check out TrueDFS.com um, or TrueDFS on YouTube and, you know, check out other contents about other sports. Otherwise, I hope you guys make some money today and rake in some profits. Um, otherwise, yeah, you can reach out to me at DFS Chan on Twitter or other social media. Have a good one. Bye-bye.